partners have been working around the clock and are fully committed to investigating the matter, this matter to bring those responsible to justice. Our collective law enforcement team has pursued thousands of leads and tips. As I said two days ago, we are working methodically and with a sense of urgency to identify those responsible for the bombings. Within the last day or so, through, our, through that careful process, we initially developed a single person of interest. Not knowing that if the individual was acting alone or in concert with others, we obviously worked with extreme purpose to make that determination. The entire force of the federal government, the FBI in Boston, around the world, as well as our partners in the Boston Police, ATF, Massachusetts State Police, and more than 30 agencies of the Boston Joint Terrorism Task Force have set about to ensure that all responsible for the bombings will be brought to justice. More importantly, it was done to ensure the future safety of the city of Boston, the Commonwealth of Massachusetts, and the country. Indeed, through that process, the FBI developed a second sub sub suspect. Today, we are enlisting the public's help to identify the two suspects. After a very detailed analysis of photo, video, and other evidence, we are releasing photos of these two suspects. They are identified as suspect one and suspect two. They appear to be associated. Suspect one is wearing a dark hat. Suspect two is wearing a white hat. Suspect two set down a backpack at the site of the second explosion just in front of the Forum restaurant. We strongly encourage those who were at the Forum restaurant who have not contact, contacted us yet to do so. As you can see from one, of the, from one of the images, suspects one and two appear to be walking together through the marathon crowd on Boylston Street in the direction of the finish line. That image was captured as they walked on Boylston in the vicinity of the intersection with Gloucester Street. As you can see, the quality of the photos is quite good but we will continue to work on developing additional images to improve their identification value. Further, on FBI.gov, we have photos of the suspects. The photos and videos are posted for the public and media to use, review, and publicize. For clarity, these images should be the only ones, and I emphasize the only ones, that the public should view to assist us. Other photos should not be deemed credible and, and they unnecessarily divert the public's attention in the wrong direction and create undue work for vital law enforcement resources. For more than 100 years, the FBI has relied upon the public to be its eyes and ears. With the media's help, in an instant, these images will be delivered directly into the hands of millions around the world. We know the public will play a critical role in identifying and locating these individuals. Somebody out there knows these individuals as friends, neighbors, co-workers, or family members of the suspects. Though it may be difficult, the nation is counting on those with information to come forward and provide it to us. No bit of information, no matter how small or seemingly inconsequential, is too small for, for us to see. Each piece moves us forward towards justice. It is extremely important to contact us with any information regarding the identities of suspect one, suspect two, and their location. We consider them to be armed and extremely dangerous. No one should approach them. No one should attempt to apprehend them except law enforcement. Let me reiterate that, reiterate that caution. Do not take any action on your own. If you see these men, contact law enforcement. If you know anything about the bombings or the men pictured here, please call the telephone listed on the photo arrays. That's 1-800-CALL-FBI. Again, that's 1-800-225-5324. All calls will be kept confidential. We have also established a website for tips that directly relates to the bombing. Please contact, please contact us at bostonmarathontips.fbi.gov. Again, that website is bostonmarathontips.fbi.gov. The photos can be viewed on our website, fbi.gov. It is important to emphasize the images from Monday are indelible, and the horror of that day will remain with us forever. This further underscores our obligation to investigate this crime judiciously in order to bring these, those responsible to justice. The victims and the survivors deserve nothing more. Nothing less, excuse me. As, of, as to Monday's victims, the FBI is committed to ensuring that victims receive the rights they are entitled to and the assistance they need to cope with the crime. 
treating victims with respect and providing them with assistance, benefits, benefits and help and, and assistance will better our cases. Our resources include an Office of Victim Assistance at FBI Headquarters and Victim Specialists nationwide. These highly trained professionals can assist victims and coordinate with other agencies to provide victims with the support, information, and resources necessary to effectively meet their needs. Our victim specialist team continues to work around the clock to bring assistance to the victims of this heinous act. Identifying and locating those responsible is now our highest priority. No other details of the invest investigation will be released at this time because this is our focus now. It continues to be an ongoing, active investigation. Review these photographs and contact us at 1-800-CALL-FBI or www.bostonmarathontips.fbi.gov immediately. Thank you very much. Karen? I was wondering if, should there be arrest, what potential charges do you I, I wouldn't want to comment on that, Karen, right now. I would allow uh, U.S. Attorney Ortiz to comment on that aspect. Okay. Okay. Why are you denying that there's bomb drills Monday morning? We got photographs on Infowars.com, folks. Uh, Next question, please. Next question, please. Yes. Yes. Are both suspects seen planting these devices at the finish line of the Boston Marathon? No. The only one who was observed planting what we believe to be the device is suspect number two with a white cap. What time? What time did they, did they put those devices down? I don't have the precise time in front of me. It was shortly before the bomb blast went off. Within minutes. Mr. Delorier, are these the sole people of interest to the FBI at this point? At this time, these are the people of interest to the FBI. Yes, yes. Do you have any information on what they did after the explosions? Any indication they were around watching? Do you have any video of them walking away? Suspect number two uh, with the white cap on proceeded west on uh, Boylston Street. And that's all we know right now. Sir, can you, can you address the, uh, the, there are pictures today in newspapers all over the country, including the New York Post, that identify two men as potential suspects. I'm just wondering what it does to your investigation when things like this get out and, and these guys are wrong. I think I addressed that, uh, thank you, and I think I addressed that question in my statement by saying the only official photos that should be officially relied upon in this investigation are those you see before you today. I do stand by that statement right now. There's no additional imminent danger that we are aware of right now. Okay, thank you. Again, again, the photos are available at FBI.gov. Uh, we'll have more information when we have something to release publicly. We'll be back, but we'll let you know. Check our website, FBI.gov.